so it already got stuck. I, you, there's nothing I can do about it. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I am so glad to have you back checking out what Chris and I are up to. So in today's video, we are bringing out the whites. It is now past Memorial Day and we can bring out the whites. Do you all remember that old saying? So yes, in today's video, I am doing some whites with some naturals some cottagecore farmhouse, just brightening it up for the spring and summertime. So Chris and I are gonna be tag teaming these pieces of furniture to share the process with you all, how we take these secondhand found furniture pieces that may have been discarded and unwanted and give them some new love and get them ready to resell. I believe you all went shopping with me. I did a thrift with me where I showed that I picked up this little cabinet. What a nice size extra storage cabinet. I believe it was $15.29, but I would like to update it just a little bit. It's in great shape. The bones are fabulous. Yep, only a few minutes into the sanding process did he find something that needed to be tightened and re-glued. Just this little detailed piece on the bottom, no big deal, but that's how we get our hands on those pieces and check everything out. Now that he has all that chippy paint off, it's time to work on the inside. And the inside is in great condition. It's nice and sturdy. It just needs a brighten of white. But first, get that all cleaned up using just some super clean and a rag to wipe it clean. Do you ever just look at a project and you think, it's beautiful. Why cover up all that he sanded? So I'm just going to fix one of the little spots in the inside that had a little bit of bleed through, just a couple coats of shellac. But I'm going to come up with something else for the outside of this because all that sanding he did a beautiful job with. So Chris spent so much time sanding all of these down. They're just absolutely gorgeous. So I don't want to cover them up, plain and simply. So this is a perfect opportunity. So I have the new release Bella stamps from IOD. Oh, so I thought this was perfect. Oh, <laughs> stuck in my stuck to my okay so we got this one so all I need to do is center it now there's a pointy part and a circle part here so but yeah so that's what we're going to do I just thought it would be fun um not maybe take it all the way down in all three drawers but yeah just keep it light and airy and then we're going to stamp this on. So I'm going to center it on my Coyote stamping mount here. Used and abused <laughs> one. So four, no, four and a half, three, two. Just trying to get it centered on this the squares here so I know that I'm I don't know how I'm centered and put some tape on my side so when I get it inked up I know where I'm going to put it okay and we'll make 
sure that this is this guy's even. IOD ink. Okay, we're gonna get it ink, inked up. Smudge that I touched. Okay, wish me the luck. Wish me the yuck. Um, I guess I need to use some paint because you don't even see it. It's that material, I think. Actually, once I go to white to wax it, I think it will pop it. I don't want it to be overpowering anyway. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to leave that as is. I like it once we wax it. I'm going in. Since it's not so subtle, I think it's fine working my way down. I wasn't sure. I know the tones of the woods are not all the same because it's a homemade piece, but I'm hoping to get do some white wax in the corners and that will tie it all in. There's just sealing that in, just pop that out, just a little bit of something, but not overpowering. So as it's funny, all I can think of are those little travel books we had as kids when we go on car rides and I'd have that invisible ink and you would answer the questions or draw the picture and all of a sudden something would show up. That's what I kept thinking of as I'm waxing this stamp. Now I need to make, I'm taking some Annie Sloan clear wax and some white paint to make a little bit of white wax. I ordered some, but it did not come in time. So... Now I want to white wax just around the edges. I just want to tie what I stamped into this piece. Some of the corners were, were really hard for Chris to get all the paint out. And I said, you know what? Don't worry about it. I'll just go back through and white wax it. So that's why one of the reasons I am doing this, I think it'll just tie this all together and pre-waxing you know, it'll give me a little bit better control on where I'm going to be leaving the white wax. With that IOD stamp set, you notice there is more stamps that I could have used, but I just wanted to keep this piece simple, just a stamp in the middle, all that time sanding. I know it's different types of wood, but it kind of makes the piece unique. <laughs> For the hardware, it just had a little bit of paint on it. <laughs> so just some hot water, some Murphy's oil soap, and it will scrape right off. Now, because of the simplicity of this piece, I didn't want to go extreme with my hardware, but the silver would have shown up too much. I didn't want to do black because it would be in your face. So that Spanish copper is what I'm going to try. There's still a little bit of rust here and there on this hardware. And this is a very unique system knob, little latch to get in there. So that I'm just going to go ahead and use that rub and buff. And I absolutely love how it turned out. Now, 
For this one, I it's a shinier surface. Maybe I should have sanded it a little bit, but I put one coat on and let that dry, and then I ended up putting on one more coat of the Spanish copper color, and it was just absolutely beautiful. On these pieces, it almost reminded me of a rust color. now we're going to make over this piece and this was a citywide garage sale find i'd actually seen it the first time that i went up with my son alex it was ten dollars it was not very much but the back of my car was full so and we were hot so we didn't make any space for it but next, second day when i went back up with chris to the citywide sales they were half price and i had plenty of room so this came home with me and I actually think that we did this, just moving it around maybe. I don't know. Maybe it was cracked to begin with. But you got to love Star Bond CA glue. So a little bit of the glue, a little bit of the accelerator in 15 seconds. It is dry and you can move on with your job. So see, this is why I think that maybe we did not do that. There's a little bit of brokenness, but the bones are pretty good. So just some brand nails to tighten up, which is that hard piece of cardboard that's on the bottom. Am I glad that Chris does not mind sanding when I have a vision for pieces. He puts a book on tape, he listens to a podcast, and he just sands away. So now I'm cleaning the piece off with some super clean, some hot water, and all he had to do was sand the drawers. <laughs> all he had to do was sand the drawers in the top. I need to protect all of Chris's hard work by taping off what I don't want to get any paint on. So that top, the inside, especially I want to try to keep a clean line. As you see, we've got quite a few knots on this piece and I know that it's going to yellow. I want to paint it white. We're after Memorial Day. We can bring out our whites now. <laughs> Remember that old saying? So yes, I'm going to go ahead and do a few coats of shellac, especially around those knotted areas that like to bleed through. <laughs> I actually did three coats of shellac, hoping for the best with those knots. Sometimes those knots are a little bit on the stubborn side, letting it dry in between. And now I can move on to my favorite white. I just absolutely love this Kills paint and primer, ready to use. You grab the can right off the shelf at our local Walmart is where I pick it up from. Okay, well, not my local Walmart anymore. I had to go outside of town because I don't know if they aren't going to carry it but there is one that's about 10 minutes from me that I can go to and pick it up so oh I don't know what's going to happen um I guess I'll have to start color matching this type of white if that's a thing matching up whites because they're not all created equal but I love the coverage of this paint so oh yeah so going with my details first and then getting that surface area covered
after three coats of white and maybe a fourth just touching up here and there now this piece is dry i chose to do thin coats so that i my sanding was minimum and i could keep the brush strokes minimum now i'm going back in and pop all these detailed areas using a 150 sandpaper yes i could have sprayed it but then i have to tape off the top protect the inside you know it all it, it was a nice warm day so i knew my paint was going to dry fast and sometimes painting with a brush is very relaxing <laughs> So it'd be such a shame to cover up this beautiful wood that Chris spent so much time sanding. Oh my goodness, it's, yes, I think that it's beautiful. I love that different color in the middle. So I'm going to leave it as is, but I do need to seal it in. And I don't really want to change it. Sometimes your polycrylic may change it. So I'm going to do some waxing on it, just some natural. This is now the Min Wax Soft Wax. I buy it through Amazon. I'm going to go ahead with my Annie Sloan brush and really get it in there. Now, after having a good coat put on there, now I'm going to wipe off any of the extra. And you can really feel the protection on this piece with that wax. I like that rub and buff so well on the other hardware. I'm going to go ahead and use it on this very aged brass hardware. So I really think that it cleans it up and makes it look nice and new, but it doesn't overpower the piece. So we're just going to get it cleaned up a little bit with some, because I didn't have any paint to remove on these, a Clorox wipe, make sure they're dry, and then do that rub and buff. Would you look at this piece? Yes, this is one of the pieces that we got from my friend Kathy's mom's estate. And as you see, it has multiple colors on it, along with probably a polyurethane top coat. Oh, this one's going to need some sand time, but the bones of it are really good. So I can't believe he got as much paint removed as he did without using a chemical stripper. But yeah, you just have to determine what mess you want to make. Do you want to make a sanding mess or do you want to make a stripper <laughs> gummy mess? So now I'm cleaning it off with that same mixture of super clean and hot water. And there were some deep grooves that some of the paint was still in there, but that's okay. It's character and I'm going to be covering it up with paint. So now I think maybe the original might have been stained as you can see some of that natural underneath, some of the paint still in there, and then the wood is really dry. So I'm going to go ahead and seal this in with some shellac also.
the bottom of this piece just seemed unfinished. So Chris is attaching a piece of plywood to the bottom. So one that it is closed and that we're going to put some legs on it to make it a little bit taller also. And that'll give him something to attach the legs to. And then on the sides, we've got these sides that kind of just are hanging out there. And he's going to cut those off flush. I had some um, crackage that I needed to fill in. So I stopped painting because, you know, when you paint something right, white, the crack just shows up like it's a, a detail you want to show off. So this was the perfect opportunity for him to get these sides cut off and get the feet added on. So that just gives it so much more character adding feet to the bottom of this, cutting that off even. So I'm going to leave the feet in the top as is because I'm going to be using one of the redesigned transfers on the front of this. I really don't want to make any color decisions till I see a visual of the transfer on. I decided on, I actually picked up a couple barn transfers. Um, these are redesigned. So I absolutely love that. I love that I have some wording and that I could do some shading. So let's get this out and see what the size is. Okay, here we go. I'm a visual person, so I know that there's going to be cuts. <laughs> or it's going to be cut in the middle. So, um, oops, yeah. So there it is. Look at that beauty. I, mean, I want to save this for another project. You know, we try to get <laughs> most out of it for our money. Yeah. There go. Okay, so there it is. I'm going to tape it up to see, to see, <laughs> you know, how it's all going to go, whether I keep this on the bottom. You know, it's always, they're always made to cut. So, yeah, let's see what we can do. So if you follow me on Facebook or Instagram, you might have saw my story because this is actually take two. Oh my goodness. So I got the first top piece on and then when I went to apply my second piece, it the transfer rolled up on me and rolled onto itself. So sad day. Oh, I had to pause. I didn't have anything else that I wanted to use. I actually removed the whole transfer at the top, which is not an easy thing to do. Boy, is that a sticky mess. Because I wasn't sure, one, if I was going to be able to get another barn. And if I was going to be able to find something else in my hoard stash that I wanted to use. But I fell in love with the barn when I had it on. So I ordered another one and it said it was not going to come till after June. But God wink moment, it came over the holiday weekend and I was able to complete this project for you. So yes, a, a bad thing happened, but then a good thing happened also so i'm using the assistance of chris with me here today because i do not want these rolling on top of each other have you all ever had a transfer roll on once it does you can't unstick it from each other it is just ruined
see what I mean? I just absolutely love this barn. It is gorgeous. So now we got to one first. This is where it stuck on when I was trying to remove it to release that backing. And then I didn't have anybody holding the other side. And it just rolled. So it is, sometimes it's nice not only to have a second pair of eyes to help you line up. But a second pair of hands to help you control a piece if possible. So, yep. So we're, now we just have to match up the lines and do some more rubbing. gonna lie to you all transfers are a little bit on the stressful side or they can be <laughs> oh that was very stressful for me <laughs> and now we have to make the other stressful of making cuts at first i tried an exacto knife but it more stuck onto the exacto knife and started pulling so i see there you go a second pair of eyes chris is like i think i can gingerly just very carefully use the scissors to cut it apart that a backside is really sticky so as he's working his way down he's just attaching it to the bottom of the drawers So now this is the easy part, just adding the country love. I do like that little saying. I'm not usually one for a lot of wording, but I thought it definitely goes with this barn perfectly. And then I'm going to go back in and I'm going to do a little bit of sanding on the outer edge. I don't want it to just look like I just put a square box pitcher onto my piece of furniture. So I'm going to sand off that little lip that's there on the transfer and then blend it in just doing a dry brush technique with some of the white paint. Now that I have a visual of what colors are on that barn, I could see them clearly. I'm going to go in with the Annie Sloan wax and just like I made the white wax, I'm going to make a brown wax. That truffle color I think is pretty darn close to what the roof on that barn is. So I actually am going to be waxing the feet with this mixture. that I have the feet done I'm going back in and using some of the wax to seal my transfer in now they say you can polyacrylic these now I did some owls on some soup cases a while back and when I sprayed the polyacrylic on it it kind of bled pink so I'm not going to chance that I'm just going to wax this in in keeping with that farmhouse that light and bright cottage core Oh my goodness. So I actually had sealed the top in with some shellac when I was spraying the entire piece, which then raised the grain of the wood. So I've got a little bit of texture going on. So I'm taking some 220 sandpaper and making sure that I'm smoothing this back down because yes, I'm just going to wax the top of this. And even with those little specks here and there of some paint left behind, it's that perfectly and perfect. And I'm going to absolutely love it. I love the ease of using that rub and buff, not waiting for paint to dry and having to poly acrylic, even though some pieces, that's just what I envisioned. So this kind of has that antique brass look going on to it, which just really, you notice the hardware too much. So I wanted to change the color just a bit. So I'm adding some of the silver rub and buff, but I'm not leaving it just the plain silver. I'm going to rub some of it off quickly so that it just catches in those dark detailed areas and just makes 
you still get your hardware with the hanging system of the hardware as a pole. It doesn't overpower the piece, but it still gives some visual interest. Okay, so what did you think of my cottage car farmhouse bringing out the whites after memorial furniture makeovers? I absolutely loved keeping them white, making them light and bright, and that natural wood tone. There was just something that my animal did a lot of work with that sanding, and it was actually beautiful. I just with that white, I cannot envision. I couldn't envision it being dark. I just love the different tones in that furniture and sealing that in with a wax. If I could have feel a vision, feel a vision, you would have felt how smooth and sealed in that is so give me a comment down below did you like my new iod stampage i know that was a variation between the two but that gives it character not every piece always has to be the same along with that little nightstand oh my gosh that the topping on that was that oh that um spanish copper color rub and buff wow and then yes i did have some problems with my redesign stamp but God wink moment that I got here in time and I didn't have to be sad watching a piece be unfinished in our workshop. So give me a comment down below if something like that has ever happened to you. And as always, tell me which one of these flips were your favorite. So if you are a member of our YouTube family, thank you so much. But if you are new and you're checking out our channel for the first time and you liked what you saw, please hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know when we've uploaded a new video. And we will see you next time, guys, and you can see what we're up to. Bye.